Phoenix Council, Theater Production, Girls United, Girling Buddies, and part of the Teaching Cadet Program. She's also a member of local cheerleading squad. She's escorted this evening by senior Isaac Cook. Isaac is a son of Toledo Cole and Sean Cole. He is a member of the North Shore Choir, Charisma, World Buddy, Theater Production, Tier 2 League, and the Teaching Cadet Program. And you can tell, ladies and gentlemen, by the announcements here, the involvement and activities all of these people on this year's homecoming court. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your 2018 homecoming king is Isaac Crook. When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments falling from the sky. 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 This is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Concussions. They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne Mad Ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... Uh... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because 
they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome in everyone to Spooler Stadium for tonight's SAC matchup between the visiting Bishop Lures Knights who come in with a 3-2 record taking on the host Northrop Bruins. Northrop also at 2-3. The coach of the Knights is Kyle Lindsay, who's in his sixth year at the school. He's 38 and 31 overall at Bishop Lures. Lures coming in averaging 166 points per game while giving up 174 total points. Bishop Lures coming off probably the best game in the SAC so far this season, but it was a 52 to 49 homecoming defeat to Northside. Northside ended a 20 game losing streak with that win at Lures Field. Lures gave up nearly 600 of yards of offense to the Legends, but Lures did have 637 total yards and 24 first downs. Bishop Lures quarterback Norman Kanapke threw for 551 yards which shattered the previous school record held by Scott Stansky, who had 352 yards passing back in 1996. His five touchdown tosses tied him with his big brother, James Kanapke, who had a great career at Bowling Green State University. James Kanapke set that mark in 2011 against Concordia. Senior Jordan Presley now has the second most receiving yards in a single game in Lewis history, with 212 yards on nine receptions against the Legends. Former Knight Austin Mack owns the record with 219 yards, and he did that in 2014 against these Northrop Bruins. Of course, Austin Mack now suiting up for the Ohio State University Buckeyes. Two other Knights eclipsed the century mark last week. It was Jay McJohnson, the receiver, with five grabs for 150 yards, and Nate Moore, who had eight catches for 106 or 126 yards. Senior linebackers Kamari Harris and Allen Jackson had 10 tackles apiece. Now for your Bruins, Northrop is coached by head coach Jason Dorfler, who's in his fifth year at the school. He has a 10 and 35 overall record. Northrop has scored 167 points this season while giving up 149. Northrop jumped on top of Concordia last week 14 to nothing, but eventually fell to the cadets 42 to 30. After running for 263 yards two weeks ago in a big win over Carroll, that shocked a lot of people, folks, because Carroll did beat Snyder for the first time in their program's history in week number two. So many people were surprised that Northrop got that win over Carroll, winning it 41-21 to here at Spooler Stadium. 
The Bruins last week, though, they were held to just 164 yards on the ground, 4.1 yards per carry against the Cadets. But they were led by Jeremiah Green, the running back, who had 93 yards on 15 carries. That's an average of 6.2 yards per carry. While quarterback Bailey Mirso tallied 63 yards on 21 attempts. Mirso also completed 10 of 22 passes for 197 yards and two scores. Senior wideout Davion Berry had six receptions for 106 yards while Amarion Green and Quaylen Pettis had touchdown receptions. Pettis hauled in three balls for 91 yards. On defense, Jaden Smith tallied seven tackles for Northrop, while Nigel Robertson had three tackles for a loss and two QB sacks. And his defensive end counterpart, James Jones, also recorded a sack in that matchup. Well, it's a beautiful day here, quite windy at Spooler Stadium as we are on the northeast side of Indiana. And today's broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports, like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. At Parkview Sports Medicine, it's game on. We're the region's largest integrated sports medicine team, providing athletes specialized services from improving their performances to recovering from injuries. To learn more, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Kelly Automotive Group is Indiana's number one automotive group. With over 1,000 new vehicles and 500 pre-owned vehicles to choose from. Please visit drivekelly.com. Simple, transparent, reliable. The world is waiting for you to make a difference in a way that only you can. Discover your strengths at Indiana Wesleyan University's residential campus, campus in Marion, Indiana. Visit indwes.edu. Big Eye Fish has been around Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eye Fish. The University of St. Francis offers 100% job employment in select programs and 100% pass rates on many licensure exams. With over 2,300 students on the main campus, which is located in the heart of Fort Wayne. Make sure to visit sf.edu. At Parkview Sports Medicine, it's game on. We serve every level of athlete with our integrated sports medicine teams, including the region's only specialized athletic rehab facility. Learn more about our services by logging on to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Folks, we're gonna take one more break here before the start of today's matchup. Once again, it's the Bishop Lures Knights taking on your Northrop Bruins. Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent, our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable, buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group, simple, transparent, reliable. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. Welcome back, everybody. We're just moments away from kickoff here as we're waiting for the teams to come out on the field here at Spooler Stadium. 
checking out the Summit Athletic Conference. Bishop Dwenger holds the lead at 5-0. and Snyder and Wayne, and Snyder's actually traveled to Wayne tonight to take on the Generals. They're both tied for second place at 4-1. and Bishop Lures at 3-2 and holds down the fourth spot. Carroll, Concordia, Northrop, and Homestead all tied at 2-3. and in the ninth spot is Northside at one and four, and Southside at zero and five. This past Friday it was Concordia taking down Northrop 42 to 30. Bishop Dwanger handing Carroll a 34 to 14 loss. Northside with the big upset win at Bishop Lures 52 to 49. Snyder held Homestead to, I believe it was just 52 yards passing, their lowest output all season in the 23-7 win here at Spooler Stadium against the Spartans. And Wayne had a dominating performance, 35-8 to over Southside. And in that game, how about Craig Young? All he does is catch touchdowns. He had four receptions and four touchdowns in that game. Craig Young does lead the SAC with eight touchdown receptions. Looking at the conference passing, you guessed it, Norman Kanapke after passing for 551 yards. He does lead the SAC with 1,423 yards on the season. That's a big number for Mr. Norman Kanapke. He also ranks number one in the country with 83 completions. Excuse me, number one in the SAC with 83 completions. Number one in attempts with 141 and his 13 touchdowns ties him with Gavin Vogt for number one in the Summit Athletic Conference. Gavin Vogt does rank number two in passing with 1,277 yards. Jake Bird from Concordia behind him with 1,027. Then you need to insert Bailey Mirso from Northrop, who ranks number four with 837 yards passing. Folks, what's really impressive is Bailey Mirzo also ranks number two in the SAC with seven rushing touchdowns. That's right, Bailey Mirzo is a dual quarterback threat for the Northrop Bruins. Mirzo ranks number four in the SAC with 101 attempts. He ranks number three with 55 completions and ranks number five with eight touchdowns. His four interceptions ranks him fifth in the SAC as well as now you see the Northrop Bruins running on to the field. Northrop, their past four seasons going two and eight in every single season. Coach Dorfler looking to get over the hump here in year number five as head coach at Northrop as they are looking for win number three on the season and will it come against these Knights? Got to love the fact that both of these teams have great uniforms where you can see the numbers very, very clear. Especially Bishop Lures, who has the oversized numbers on the back. Big shout out to Kyle Lindsay and the Bishop Lures Knights for the uniform selection. Looking at the SAC rushing, we have some good ones on display today. I talked to you about Bailey Mirso. The quarterback, yeah, he can also rush it. He has 350 yards rushing on the season, which ranks him number eight in the conference. Teammate Jeremiah Green has 395 yards rushing, which ranks him number six. But you got to keep an eye out for Jordan Presley, the senior from Bishop Lures, who's getting a lot of Mac looks for his college scholarship opportunities he ranks number three with 404 yards rushing he has four touchdowns rushing touchdowns on the season but both Bailey Mirso and Jeremiah Green have seven rushing touchdowns on the season Green is averaging 4.94 yards per carry while Jordan Presley is averaging 4.9 yards per carry as well a name that a lot of people have been noticing lately for Bishop Lures is Braden Coward who wears number five he's come on the scene as of late he has 143 yards rushing averaging 4.9 as well with four rushing touchdowns captains 
For Bishop Lures, we have number 34, Allen Jackson, the tight end and linebacker. Number 77, that's Big Jack Sweeney, the senior offensive defensive lineman. Number 79, Gabe Hendricks, senior O lineman, D lineman. And number 16, that is Nate Moore, the junior wide receiver, DB. For Northrop, it's number 70, Nick Price, six foot two, 210 pounds senior. Number 71, Ben Wally, six foot, 210 pounds senior as well. O lineman, D lineman. I believe that's number 26, John Urza. Senior at 5'9", 170. He's a linebacker for the Bruins. The Bruins will receive. We're all set. Bishop Lures is going to kick off from right to left. They will be kicking into the south. And it looks like right now the wind is blowing straight into your camera, folks. So down on the field for Northrop, it'll be blowing from left to right in their first offensive possession. To kick it off for the Bishop Lures Knights, it's number 22, John Podzlinski, the senior place kicker. And back deep, deep to return it for Northrop, number seven, Davion Barry, who had the big kickoff return against Wayne, a game that Northrop nearly won. Northrop dropping that game 41 to 40 at Wayne. Also back deep is number 34, Demarius Cowan, along with number 22, Rashawn Vaughn. If you're a big fan of the track and field program at Northrop, which many people are, it's a renowned track and field program. You'll remember the name Rashawn Vaughn. My name is Jeff Mahoney, bringing you tonight's play-by-play -play action. And on camera is Carrington Thompson. He was a defensive end at Snyder High School. You want to hear some big numbers. His senior year, he put up 20 sacks on the season. And actually, I think that number is more like 22. I'm just going off memory. But he played at the University of St. Francis and was a devastating defensive end very fast from that position. So once again, folks, the wind is blowing in 20 mile an hour from west to east. So we'll see if that's going to be a problem all night long with the ball staying on the tee. Once again, that is number seven, Davion Barry, the senior. And that's going to bounce off his face mask as he's going to have to recover at the 12-yard line. So Northrop will set up shop first and 10 from their own 12 with Bailey Mirso coming out to lead the charge. Mirso once again is a senior at 5'11", 170 pounds. And he's having one heck of a senior season. Last year he did have to come in after Shanley got hurt to take over the quarterbacking duties for the Bruins. In the backfield, that's number five, Jeremiah Green, just a junior at 5'10", 165. He's an explosive back and hard to bring down. Mirso all the way on the sweep as a host of Knights are in on the tackle. Getting off the pile, that's number 34 for Bishop Lures. Allen Jackson, the linebacker. Good flow. Also coming off the piles, number 79, Gabe Hendricks, the big defensive lineman. That's a gain of two on the play for Mirso. It'll bring up second and eight. So we are just 30 seconds into this game. Out of the shotgun formation, that is green to the right of Mirso. Two wide receivers down beat down to the right of your screen and once again that's a quarterback keeper design quarterback keeper for Mirso. It's going to be a gain of about two more yards maybe three. Should bring up a third and five.
Wide receiver number 15, Adrian Sewell into the game. He's only a sophomore at six foot, 170. Gusty wins here at Spooler Stadium. Quaylen Pettis now coming to the bottom of your screen along with number two, Amarion Green. Two wide receivers up top as well. As Mirzo's in the shotgun with Green set off to the right. Green takes the handoff and what a nice tackle. Blitzing on the play was Allen Jackson. That's a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Looks like a loss of about one play or one yard. So that will bring up fourth and six. To punt it will be Mirso, which is dangerous if you are Bishop Lures because you have to respect the rugby punt. The fact that Mirso can take off and run it. Back deep for Lures is number one, Justin Gaston. So nice to see him back with the Knights. And Jordan Presley, Miroso's punt is going to be taken in the air, fielded at the 42-yard line by Presley. Presley gets the corner, and he cuts back. He is gone. A 42-yard touchdown for Jordan Presley. Knights lead it, 6-0. Dangerous on that punt there as it only went about 20 yards and Jordan Presley was able to catch it on the run. Big touchdown to open this game for the Bishop Lures Knights. Bishop Lures coming into this game. With 166 points scored under their belt throughout five games. With the PAT attempt, it's number 29, Carter Drake, who kicked the game winning field goal against Homestead. Carter, just a junior, as that one is up and in. So Bishop Lewis goes up. 7-0 over Northrop. And let's take a look at that return. By Jordan Presley. Once again, that's the quarterback, ba Bailey Mirso, with the punt. You saw Presley get the outside corner, and right here, cuts it back inside. Beautiful block on the play by number 24, Nick Berkmeyer, the junior wide receiver. And just like that, the Knights are on the board after the 42-yard punt return for a touchdown by Jordan Presley. He is so dangerous, folks. as we are just two minutes and 20 seconds into this game. 9.40 on the scoreboard. Back deep once again for Northrop is Davion Barry in the middle. Up top, number 22, Rashawn Vaughn. And once again, the ball is gonna blow off the tee. Folks, it's one of those nights where you're gonna have to get somebody to hold that ball on the stand. The wind has since shifted from north to south, blowing to the east. Also back is the big man, number 34, Demarius Cohen. That kick is going to go through the end zone. Once again, I said the wind had shifted from east to west to north to south. And Bishop Lewis taking advantage of that. Once again, the kicker. John Podzinski taking advantage. So Bishop Lewis will come out to the 20-yard line, first and 10. A little bit better field position than their last drive as they started at the 12-yard line. I want to give a big shout out to the stat man for Northrop, Eric Erdman. He's one of the best in the business, folks. He does a great job getting the stats out right away to all the media. As that's a read option by Mirso, keeps it himself, bounces off the O-line. He's going to be tackled for a gain of about six yards. In on the tackle is number 20, 
Raymond Anderson, along with number 34. I gotta believe this man's gonna have a big night. That's Alan Jackson. It's gonna bring up second four ball at the 26 yard line. 9.17 on the clock for Northrop. Once again, flex formation with two wide receivers up top and bottom. Mirso out of the shotgun. Jeremiah Green right next to him. Keep an eye out on Quaylen Pettis on the bottom of your screen. Mirso, play action. Looks to the middle of the field. And that ball is kind of floated into the air. It's intercepted by Janarian Moore. They like to call him Nate Moore. Big pick there by Moore. Looks like Wynn might have been knocked out of Moore as he landed awkwardly. We're going to take a break. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back to Summit City Sports presentation of Indiana High School football. It's Bishop Lures driving here on their second series of the game. It's first and 10 from the 48 with 8.54 left to play here in the first quarter. Norman Kanapke out of the shotgun, the exact same formation. As we saw from Northrop, the pass goes out wide to Jay McJohnson. Johnson, that's a gain of about eight yards. Should bring up a second and two. So impressed with Jay McJohnson. Looks like that's actually a nine yard gain. So it'll bring up second and one. We got trips on the top of your screen, Jordan Presley. And in the backfield, it's Braden Coward, Kanapke. Finds Presley's tack tackled right away by number 35, Antoine Scott for Northrop, but that will be a first down for Bishop Lures. First and 10 now from the 39. This is a hurry up offense put together by Kyle Lindsay and the Knights. Flex formation on the bottom of your screen is Justin Gaston playing in his first game since the week two loss, again, or excuse me, the week two win over Homestead. Looks like we got encroachment by the defensive line. So things getting easier and easier for Lures in this game. Up seven to nothing. Let's be first and five ball at the 33. Coward in the backfield with Kanapke. Handoff goes to Braden Coward. Met right away, but he will get about two yak yards. Yards after contact. Wrapping him up was big number 73 for Northrop Rashad Moore at six foot 275. And I believe Alex Satterweight was also in on the tackle. Brings up second and two ball at the 25 yard line. Kanapke looking on the out route just short of number 12, Cameron Hedgecock. Folks, when it comes to receivers, I mean, now Bishop Lures has back Justin Gaston. They probably have overall the best receivers in the Summit Athletic Conference. When you look at Hedgecock, Presley, Jay McJohnson, I got to believe that's why oh, Kanapke cannot handle that snap, does get it back. Putting on the pressure was number 53, Nigel Robertson, who leads Northrop with six sacks on the season. 
Folks, the key for Northrop in this game is to get good play from the defensive ends, Nigel Robertson and James Jones. If they can put pressure on Norman Kanapke and make it a long day for the senior QB, the Bruins will be in good shape. Fourth and nine, ball at the 32. Kanapke forced out of the pocket, finds Jordan Presley, and that's going to be a 32-yard touchdown for Jordan Oh, no, it looks like he was knocked out at the one-yard line. So that'll be a big 31-yard reception for Jordan Presley. Let's take another look at it on the SummitCitySports.com replay. You see Kanapke getting flushed out of the pocket by Robertson, and that's what Bish that's what Northrop needs to do all day. I'm not sure how. Oh, that's right. They did call that one a touchdown. Okay, that's going to make a little bit more set sense. PAT attempt is up and good for Bishop Lures. So we'll stay right here, folks. Once again, you saw that touchdown reception there by Jordan Presley. A great job. By... Norman Kanapke, who got flushed out of the pocket. You saw the speed from the defensive end there. Looking dark. From the defensive end there, Nigel Robertson. Folks, he's getting better week by week, is Robertson. He is the brother of Richard Robertson, who's playing ball right now up at, I believe he's playing NAI ball up in the region. But Nigel wears number 53. At six foot two, 205 pounds, he's only a junior, folks. Keep an eye out on Nigel Robertson, who if you're a college coach, he's somebody that's really creeping up the radar here. Let's get the Knights up 14 to nothing here with 7-11 left to play. Taking it is going to be Number seven, Davion Berry slips a few tackles. Is going to get all the way out to the 39-yard line. Outstanding return by Davion Berry. This is the best field position of the game here for Northrop, who is in their third offensive series. The first one started at the 12, the second at the 20, and now it'll be first and 10 from the 40-yard line. Last time out, though, for Bailey Mirso. He lofted a pass up in the air. The wind caught it, and it just floated where Nate Moore had all day to intercept it. Flex formation for the Bruins. In motion, that's number 15, Adrian Sewell. Jeremiah Green with the carry. Looks like he picks up tough, picks up a tough two to three yards on the carry. Beautiful night here at Spooler Stadium. Just a bit windy. They're going to call that a four-yard gain. It brings up second and six from the 43-yard line for Northrop. Mirso has Green to his left out of the shotgun. Two receivers up top and bottom for the Bruins. Mirso quickly goes over to Quaylen Pettis. Slips one tackle. Big Quaylen Pettis is hard to bring down. At six foot four, 175 pounds, he's a great basketball player. Really emerged last year for Coach Rod Chamble and these Northrop Bruins. But once again, looking at his numbers on the season, Quaylen Pettis just 10 receptions, but for 238 yards, folks, he averages 24 yards per reception. And with that frame right there, he's got Division One football written all over him. Quaylen Pettis at the bottom of your screen. We've got trips right up top. Stuck in motion there is Amarion Green as Mirso keeps himself on the read option. He is off, pushed out at the 23 yard line. A big gain of about 28 yards for Bailey Mirso. Defensive end lost contain on the play for Bishop Lures. Number 88, the left defensive end is Jacob Krieger, big junior for the Knights. Brings up first and 10 from the 34 yard line, excuse me. 
Looks like that was more a gain of about 16 yards. Handoff goes to Green. He's tripped up right away. Still, though, a gain of about two or three yards for the junior running back. They're going to call that a gain of one. Brings up second and nine. Ball at the, uh, looks to be the 33-yard line. Quaylen Pettis at the bottom of your screen. It's Amarion Green, the second receiver at the bottom. Green in the backfield. Mirso, as Amarion Green gets sent in motion. Mirso, quick find once again to Quaylen Pettis. Pettis doing a good job of securing the first two passes of this game that he's seen. That is going to be a gain of about five yards. Brings up third and three. Ball at the 27 yard line. Once again, flex formation. Carrington Thompson on camera doing a great job of getting this game framed up nicely for your folks. The hand, handoff goes to Jeremiah Green. Escaped one tackle, but was knocked down hard by Justin Gaston. So nice to have Justin Gaston back on the field. Gaston is a senior receiver, defensive back for the Knights there. Uh -uh. He is the younger brother of Chuck Gaston, who was a part of the 2016 National Championship University of St. Francis football team. Charles Gaston, they call him Chuck. Split formation here. Two receivers up top and bottom. Mirso once again out of the shotgun. First and 10. Read option, keeps it himself, goes around the right edge. Bailey Mirso is in. And that is a touchdown from 20 yards out. Bailey Mirso. Great look and run there by Mirso. Chest bump with Quaylen Pettis. Northrop gets right back into this game, folks, down 14 to 6. Bailey Mirso is dangerous. And once again, they went around the right hand side. The defensive end, Krieger, got a hand on Mirso, but. Finger tackles are not going to bring him down. Got to get a body on Mirso. The extra point is up and in for number 18, Tarek Borjic. 14-7, Knights have the lead, and we'll be right back with you for more high school football here from SummerCitySports.com. So Ryan, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back everyone to Spooler Stadium. We have three minutes and 55 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. And the Northrop Bruins get on the board after the 20 yard scamper by Bailey Mirso. Mirso on the read option was able to break the arm tackle from the Bishop Lures Knights and he was off to the races, found the pylon. We'll show you that replay when we get the next opportunity. With the kickoff, it's gonna be Tark Bork, six foot two, 200 pound junior. He also plays wide receiver and linebacker. That'll be picked up by Coward as he'll get a gain of about five yards on the tackle was Alex Satterthwaite. Bailey Mirisa, let's check out your touchdown run. It is his eighth touchdown run of the season, which ties him with Anias Lockett for an SAC lead. Once again, showing off the speed and the length to reach for the pylon. Bailey Mirso gets the Bruins on the board, down 14 to seven. Norman Kanapke and the Knights, though, come to the line of scrimmage. It's first and 10 from the 35 yard line. We got trips right, Justin Gaston on the bottom of your screen and in the backfield, 
That is Coward. Braden Coward will take the handoff and following his offensive line, that's going to be a big gain of about six yards for Coward. I had a chance to see Spencer Coward at the last home game for the Knights. Spencer supporting Braden. Spencer Coward, who is a graduate from Northrop High School, a two-time national champion for the University of St. Francis. Second four, ball at the 41. Kanapi out of the shotgun, looking downfield for Gaston. And great coverage by number 14, Darius Maxwell. Only listed at five foot four, 125 pounds. Maxwell has a huge heart and played textbook DB coverage there on Gaston. Justin Gaston, a little bit bigger, listed at six foot, 175 pounds. Brings up third and four. Kanapke out of the shotgun once again. This time he's going to find number three, Jay McJohnson. Big hit on the play by number 10, Jaden Smith. But that will be enough to move the chains. First down for the Bishop Lures Knights. It will be first and 10 from the 48-yard line, their own 48. Kanapke out of the shotgun with Coward. Lined up next to him. Handoff goes to Coward. Nice move at the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up about seven yards on the game. How about that big hit on that last play? Let's take another look at it. It was number 10, Jaden Smith for Northrop. Boom. Second and two, ball at the 44-yard line for Norman Kanapke. Finds Justin Gaston. Tackled right away by number 14, Maxwell. Also, Satter weight in on the tackle, but that will be a first down. First and 10, ball at the 31-yard line. Gaston showing no ill effects of the concussion he suffered in the fourth quarter against Homestead. 222 left on the clock here in the first quarter. We got trips on the top of your screen. Justin Gaston all alone on the bottom. Kanapke handoff goes to Coward. He's met right at the line of scrimmage. Coward will get about two extra yards. Satterway once again with the tackle for the Bruins. Brings up second eight for the Bishop Lewis Knights. Offense has not been a problem for these Knights all season long. In the SAC, their 166 point scored entering today is just one point behind Northrop's 167. Both teams can light up the scoreboard. Flag on the play, let's see what we have. Folks, if you've never been to a University of St. Francis football game i highly recommend it not this saturday but the following saturday the legal procedure against bishop lures the number one ranked team with 26 consecutive wins under their belt usf cougars will take on the marion knights who by that time should be a top 10 team the knights out of marion have two national championships under their belt as well but this past weekend it was kind of comical where St. Francis had 17 penalties and St. Ambrose only had three. Kanapke looking downfield, looking for Presley. A little bit of incidental contact downfield, no flag on the play. That will bring up third and 14 from the 34-yard line. Norman Kanapke was the talk of social media this past weekend after his performance against Northside. Kanapke was 26 of 38 for 551 yards and five touchdowns. Folks, that's just 12 yards away from the state record of 563 yards by a Lafayette Jeff quarterback. Can't pronounce his name, so I'm not even gonna try to butcher it. We got a timeout called by Bishop Lewis coach, Kyle Lindsey. We'll take a break up here in the booth. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. 
I mean, I always had my family behind me, I always had my team behind me, but to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. We are back, everybody, where Norman Kanapke has an empty backfield. Trips receivers up top, two to the bottom. Kanapke on third and 14, finds Justin Gaston, cuts it up in the middle of the field, and getting his arms around him was John Urza, the five foot, nine inch, 170 pound senior linebacker for Northrop. That's gonna bring up a fourth down. Coach Kyle Lindsay's gonna roll the dice here on fourth and six ball at the 28 yard line. We're inside one minute to play, folks. 14 to seven is your score. Bishop Lures up early. Kanapke out of the shotgun. That's Jordan Presley in the backfield. He's gonna stay in to block. Kanapke steps up and a beautiful play breaking on the pass was Darius Maxwell. Only five foot four. But folks, this man is having a game. Hats off to the young man, number 14, Darius Maxwell. Are we on the filter? It's looking a little darker. So it'll be first and 10, ball at the 28 with 36 seconds remaining here in the first quarter for the Bruins. Mirso out of the shotgun with Jeremiah Green back with him. We got flex formation. The spread. Handoff goes to Green as he is met right away at the line of scrimmage by number 34. Our man Allen Jackson. Look for him to have double digit tackles in this game. That is going to be a gain of about four yards. Brings up second and six from the 33 yard line. Defensively, for the Knights, they are led by Josh Dippold, who comes in with 40 tackles. That ranks him number six in the SAC. And Kamari Harris, who has 3.5 sacks on the season, which ranks him number six in the SAC. That'll do it for the first quarter. Bishop Lures leads it 14 to seven over the Northrop Bruins. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game, to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back everyone to Spooler Stadium. My name is Jeff Mahoney bringing you the play-by-play -play action today and on camera is Carrington Thompson, the former defensive end for the Snyder Panthers who had 22 sacks in his senior season. Guarantee you he'd be in the top five all time in the SAC. Carrington, if you ever watch one-on-one -on -one drills, O-line versus D-line, Carrington was phenomenal. Just, I've never seen anybody as fast as Mr. Thompson. Trips to the left, 
as we got a read option kept by Bailey Mirso and a big sack. That's number 79, the big D or defensive tackle, Gabe Hendricks. Also in on the play was Jacob Krieger, number 88, the defensive end. Outstanding play by the Lures D-line. As you see, Hendricks got right through. It's going to bring up third and eight, ball at the 30. Mirso out of the shotgun. Receivers spread out. Jeremiah Green in the backfield with him. Mirso downfield with the receptions, number seven, Davion Barry. And that'll be a first down for Northrop. You're good. Brings up first and 10, ball at the 41. Davion Barry had a big game in the 41 to 40 loss to Wayne. Northrop scored a touchdown late in the game with about 1.30 left to play. A PAT attempt was defended by Craig Young and ended up giving Wayne the loss. But Davion Barry, what a game he had for Northrop. Mirso, read option keeper, and he'll get Looks like the forward progress will get him to the 49 or 48 yard line for a first down. No, the ref's going to spot it at the 50. I don't know if I agree with that one there from the Zebras. Loss of forward progress. He at least got it to the 49 yard line. Brings up second and two from the 50. Receivers spread out. Mirso with Jeremiah Green in the backfield. 10-10 left to play in the second. We got a false start going to be called. It goes against Quaylen Pettis. As the far official throws the flag. That's going to back up these Bruins. It'll bring up second and seven. Mirzo's run once again. We'll see if he does get past the 50 yard line and you can see he clearly does. Wide receivers spread out, Mirzo in the shotgun. Second and seven from the 45. Mirzo looking left, goes to his second read and a big hit as the pass was intended for a Marion Green. Justin Gaston in on the play along with number 20, Raymond Anderson. Green's gonna be down for a second as those two DBs converged quickly for the Knights. The Knights skill possession players are some of the best that you'll find in the Summit Athletic Conference. While Green is down, we'll take a break up here in the booth. You're watching Indiana High School Football here on SummitCitySports.com. There's a Ryan play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. Welcome back, everyone, after that short break. Let's take a look at this Bishop Lures defense. Defensive end, Jacob Krieger. Other defensive end is Will Derrick. Defensive tackle is Gabe Hendricks in their 3-4 alignment. Alan Jackson, Kamari Harris, Nick Berkmeyer, and Josh Dippold. Dippold, who leads the Knights with 40 tackles, are the linebackers. Cornerbacks, Joe Derrick and Cameron Hedgecock. Actually, we got Justin Gaston back in, so he's playing corner for the Knights. And it's Johnny Sewell and Raymond Anderson. We saw Raymond Anderson just moments ago, folks, with the big hit. Raymond Anderson can flat out converge on a ball, and he's only a sophomore, listed as running back and defensive back. Starters for the Northrop offense, it's quarterback Bailey Mirso. Running back Jeremiah Green. Your slot receivers are Amarion Green and Adrian Sewell. Wideouts are Davion Berry and Quaylen Pettis. 
Left tackle is Nick Price. Left guard is Tanner Therio. The center is Brad Pori. Right guard is Jacob Melke. And the right tackle is Jose Reducindo. Sorry, Jose. Brings up third and seven, ball at the 45. Eh, 46 yard line, it's the 45 and a half. Northrop on their own side of the 50. As we've got the spread formation. Bailey Mirso out of the shotgun with Jeremiah Green. Bishop Lures looking to blitz with Kamari Harris. Kamari Harris will come from the outside. And on the quick out, pass intended for number 15, Adrian Sewell, incomplete. That's going to bring up a punting situation for Northrup, this time with the wind at their back. Northrup did receive, so we'll see if Bishop Lures wants to take the wind or the ball. After halftime, there's Mirso right there. Back deep is Justin Gaston and Jordan Presley. Arguably the two biggest threats. We'll get the point. The two biggest threats in the SAC. Mirso with the kick. Much better. A low line drive as that gets a north of Bruins bounce and goes out of bounds around the 16-yard line. We'll bring up first and ten for the Knights. Bishop Lures, their third offensive series, excuse me, fourth of the game. Northrop defense has been playing solid after giving up the first touchdown of the game. It was the reception by Jordan Presley as he will, was able to walk in just inside the pylon. Nigel Robertson with a great pressure on the play. You see right there him and James Jones switching formations. James Jones now playing defensive end to the wide side of the field. He will be tested as the handoff goes to Jordan Presley, but quickly into the backfield was number 35, Antoine Scott, the junior linebacker at 5'10", 205. Boy, Antoine Scott was in the backfield like a rocket as the Bishop Lures offensive line did a good job of shielding James Jones. Now Jones on the bottom of your screen at the left defensive end position. Handoff this time goes to Presley. Looks like that's going to be a gain of about one or two yards. Should bring up third and eight. Looks like it'll be maybe more like third and nine. Ball at the 16. Bishop Lures needs to do something here deep in their end or Northrop could claw right back into this game. Spread formation, it's Presley in the slot to the right. Jay McJohnson in the slot to the left. Knappy looking downfield, overthrows Presley and the ball is intercepted. Huge interception by number 29 for Northrop and that is Mason Thompson. Folks, that is a huge play here by these Bruins trying to get into back into this game, and they will. Down 14 to 7. You see Kanapke overthrows Presley. And big number 29, Mason Thompson, only a junior with the interception all the way down to the 13 yard line. That's a big time play for that junior. Going to bring up first and 10, ball at the 23. Mirso out of the shotgun with Jeremiah Green. Inside receiver, and it looks like we got movement on the offensive line. That's going to back up Northrop five yards. We'll bring up first and 15. Sewell, the inside receiver to the top of your screen, and Mason Hoffer, the senior at 6'2, 165 was in the slot to the left. Hoffer's going to jog off the field now. He said, Coach, give me a chance. Leave me in. Now in the slot is number 13, Jordan McClung, 6'2", 170. Mirso with Jeremiah Green. 
first and 15 ball at the 28. 822 left to play here in the second on the wide receiver screen. That's Davion Barry chomping up, getting some of those yards back all the way to the 21 yard line. It's going to be a gain of about seven yards on the play. Should bring up second and eight. Davion Barry is electric with the ball in his hands. Spread formation, Mirso from shotgun. It is second and eight, ball at the 21. Mirso delayed handoff to Jeremiah Green. He is stuck right at the line of scrimmage and no whistles being blown as that pile keeps moving forward. Meeting him right away was Gabe Hendricks. Gabe Hendricks has been doing work for the Bishop Lures Knights from his defensive tackle position. Hendricks is as big as they come in the SAC. As a matter of fact, this combination of Jack Sweeney and Gabe Hendricks is devastating for the Bishop Lures Knights. How much fun is next week going to be when we get to watch Bishop Lures take on Bishop Dwayne? Handoff goes to Jeremiah Green, finds a seam, but once again, Hendricks is there. Oh, no, it looks like face masking is going to be called on Bishop Lures. We'll see who they call the penalty on. Let's take a look at the replay. Jeremiah Green. Yeah, you can see the face mask right there by number 77. Jack Sweeney. So with that will be a first down. First and goal from the eight from Northrop with 7.05 left to play in the second quarter. Northrop's trying to tie up this ball game. Remember last week they were up 14 to nothing before eventually losing to Concordia. Here they were down 14 to nothing. Jeremiah Green, and that's a QB keeper. Mirso up the read option. He is met by number 88, the defensive end, Jacob Krieger. It's going to be a gain of about four yards on the play as limping off the field. Might be a rolled ankle there holding his ankle is Mirso. While Mirso's down, we're going to take a break. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me, but to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Welcome back, everyone. 14 to seven, and down on the field right now is Bailey Miraso. We're wishing him all the best. He was, I don't know if he had a cramp there in his right calf, he came up holding it. Hopefully it's not a rolled ankle. What a game we have so far. I swear, every Bishop Lures game is a great game. We're gonna take one more break and be right back with you. Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. 
So into the game for Northrop, that's number 17, Seth Pearson. He is a senior, so that's good news if you're a Bruin fan. Once again, same offense here, spread formation with Jeremiah Green in the backfield. In motions, number 15, as the handoff goes to Green, met right at the line of scrimmage, and he will be pushed back. Looks like a gain of zero on the play. Should bring up third and four. That was Adrian Sewell in motion, checking into the game for Northrop's number 13, Jordan McClung. It's third and four now. Mirso not sure if it was a rolled ankle or a cra uh, cramp in his right leg. Trips right. The lone receiver to the bottom of your screen is Davion Berry. Pearson. And we got whistles. And we got a time, timeout called by Northrop. We'll keep it here, folks. Hey, let's check. A, let's take a look at the uh, leaderboard here. Some of the area leaders: Norman Kanapke, Bishop Lures, leads the area with 1,423 passing yards. Gavin Vogt from Carroll, 1,283. Tim Jordan from New Haven, 1,075. Jake Bird from Concordia, 1,027. Levi Follett from Garrett, 951 yards. Parker Grimes from Jay County, 868. And then uh, coming in at number nine is Brandon Young, the QB from Wayne, with 777. But unfortunately, that's not correct because Bailey Mirso came in with 837. So actually, Mirso should be on that list. I know, folks, it's tough because Northrop does not have their stats on max preps. That's something that I know that they're working out. 14 to seven, 604, left to play in the second quarter. It's third and three, and now out of the eye formation. It's number 22 in the backfield. as a handoff, a quick feed up to the up back. That was Jeremiah Green in for the touchdown. Three yard score and Northrop only down by one. Jeremiah Green. In to attempt the PAT, number 18, Borzik. Borzik, it is up and in. So Northrop ties this ball game up, 14 apiece, with 5.59 left to play in the second quarter. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back, everybody. Check it out there. The cheerleaders and the student section all doing the push-ups. It's 14 of them. They're going to be swole after this game because we got a shootout here at Spooler Stadium. Diesel swole. Back to return it will be Jordan Presley along with Jay McJohnson now. So Justin Gaston taking off KOR. We've seen Gaston back on punt, punt return. I do like how Bishop Lures has the two punt returners there. So it's kind of a pick your poison type of thing. Once again, to kick it for Northrop, it's number 18, Bajork. He's gonna kick it deep, and with the win, that's gonna be another touchback, his second one of the game. 
once again, if you're kicking that direction, you're good to go. When you're kicking the other way, not so much as that wind is blowing in from north to south. And it's a gusty wind here at Spooler. Oh yeah, a little chest bump there for Bajoric and Tap. Tyler Tap number nine. Much love for the specialists here at Spooler Stadium. It's gonna bring up first and 10 from the 20 yard line. Norman Kanapke, who's fresh off setting a new Bishop Lures school record for passing yards out of the shotgun. And back th there with them is Braden Cowherd. 5.59 left to play in the second quarter. Kanapke, once again a quick throw, finds Jay McJohnson. That's going to be a gain of about 11 yards. Nice tackle by number 10, Jaden Smith, because I'll tell you what, Jay McJohnson can break it at any moment. He had a huge game against Homestead, an even bigger game in the loss against Northside. Jay McJohnson is fireworks whenever he touches the ball. Kanapke, quick throw over to Justin Gaston. That'll be a gain of about one yard. Once again, Darius Maxwell in on the tackle. Darius Maxwell is quickly becoming one of my favorite football players in the SAC. You gotta love that young man. Second and nine from the 32. Norman Kanapke with the hard count gets the defensive line to jump. Encroachment will be called. And that's going to bring up a second and four. Norman Kanapke, who started last year for the Knights, the grizzled veteran. Rumors are that he does not want to play college football, but many college programs would love to have him. Second and four from the 37, trips to the right. Handoff's going to go to Braden Coward, who stumbles his way forward for a gain of about three yards. That's one thing I like about Braden Coward. He enters today averaging 4.9 yards a carry, and he's always falling forward. Coach Kyle Lindsay's gonna have no problem handed off to that young man as once again, it's gonna be hard to get him behind the line of scrimmage. Third and one ball at the 40. After the three yard gain by Coward. Trips to the right. Lone wide receiver up top is Justin Gaston. Kanapke hands it off to Coward. Coward going off the left tackle. And this time a big gainer. Coming off the pile with the tackle is number 26 for Northrop, John Urza. Urza's had himself quite a game. Also number 51, Alex Setterweight, who's going to have to come off the field as his helmet popped off. Coming in for him is the senior linebacker, Tyler Tapp. First and 10 ball at the 46, 407 and counting on the clock. Kanapke. Quick throw intended for Jay McJohnson. That hit the back of the helmet of number 35, Antoine Scott, the junior. Good coverage by Scott. As we mentioned earlier, he had the tackle in the backfield. He is just so fast from that linebacker position. Second 10 from the 46, trips right. Kanapke out of the shotgun. Looking left, goes with his first progression. It's Justin Gaston. Gaston's going to get about 10 yards on the reception. That'll bring up a Bishop Lures first down. Clock is stopped and now taken away at five, excuse me, 350. Knapke out of the shotgun has trips to the right. Gaston once again up top. Goes right and on the wide receiver screen. It's complete to Jay McJohnson once again right away in on the tackle is Antoine Scott. You want to throw away from Antoine Scott on those intermediate routes. It'll bring up a spread formation. Kanapke out of the shotgun. Second and 10, 311 and counting. Kanapke, this time looking for Jay McJohnson. 
and nowhere to go with it. Darius Maxwell was right there in the passing lane as that ball was wide right of the intended receiver. Maxwell with perfect coverage. If Maxwell would have had his eyes in the backfield, he might have picked that one off because it was thrown right to where he was at. How about Mr. Darius Maxwell having himself a heck of a game? 3.07, third and 10, ball at the 40, 44. Knappy looking downfield. He's flushed out of the pocket. Ball intended for Jordan Presley is incomplete. That'll bring up a fourth and 10. Once again, I said it, folks, the key to this game was the defensive ends from Northrop, Mr. James Jones, number 81, and Mr. Mr. Nigel Robertson, number 53. These are some good defensive ends. They made the Summit City Sports Top 10 Players of the Week two weeks ago, and rightfully so. Back to return it, we have Davion Berry and Quaylen Pettis. I like the move of Quaylen Pettis because he's hard to bring down. The punt is off. That was number 15, Norman Kanapke. Uh-oh, that ball takes a Northrop roll, and it will be stopped by number 21, Kamari Harris, the senior linebacker. Kamari Harris, one of the top linebackers in the Summit Athletic Conference. Don't have the height and weight, but he's a stout young man at about six foot one, we'll call him 200. Passes the eyeball test. So it brings up first and 10 ball at the 32. Spread formation with Jeremiah Green in the backfield. And once again, it's Pearson, the senior quarterback. In motion is Sewell. Handoff goes to Green. Green's gonna bounce it out to the left. And he turns the corner. Green has space to run. Knocked out of bounds by number 20 for Bishop Lures, Raymond Anderson. Big time run there by Jeremiah Green. If Green can catch that corner, he can do big things. So I'll bring up first and 10 from the 25. Hey, how about the senior QB, Seth Pearson, coming in on relief of Bailey Mirso and having himself a drive. First and 10, 25, ball to 25, 240 left to play. Pearson, oh, just overthrows a wide open Jordan McClung. A little bit more loft there by Pearson, and that would have been six for the Northrop Bruins as McClung was just wide open. So it brings up second 10 ball at the 25 for Mr. Seth Pearson with trips to the right and Jeremiah Green in the backfield. The handoff goes to Green. Ooh, he had a little crease there and was able to squeak through it. Big gainer for Jeremiah Green. That's gonna be about eight yards coming off the bottom of the pile. A host of Knights. Looks like Jordan Presley was in on the tackle from his safety position. Jordan Presley is just such a phenomenal football player. You gotta keep him on the field. Kyle, Kyle Lindsay knows the deal with the Knights. First and 10, ball at the 14 after that big gainer of 10 yards. Spread out are the receivers with Green in the backfield. Once again, the handoff goes to Green. He is met right away by the big defensive tackle, number 79, Gabe Hendricks. That's a tough task for number 75, Brad Pori, the 5'11", 250-pound senior. Hendricks makes him look tiny, and Pori certainly is not. Green, a gain of one yard. It's second and nine ball at 13. This is a big game here for Northrop. They're trying to break the curse of only two wins in a season. As Pearson rolls out to the right. He stopped dead in his track, and that ball was batted down by number 20. 
I've said his name plenty, Raymond Anderson. And how about Nick Berkmeyer? Berkmeyer had the contain there, which forced Pearson to throw the ball into traffic. These two teams are both playing very good football here in game number six of the season. Bishop Dwyer Saints on top of the SAC with a 5-0 record. Pearson once again flushed out of the pocket and in the end zone had Davion Berry right through his fingertips. Oh no. Seth Pearson nearly had his first touchdown pass of the game. Let's take another look, folks. Pearson rolling out to the right. Once again, this time stopped by the big defensive tackle. Throws a little bit high, but I think even Davion Berry wishes he would have hauled that one in. On fourth and nine from the 13, we got a field goal attempt by Tarek Borick. This will be a 30-yard attempt, and it's up, and it's in. Northrop takes the lead, 17 to 14. Bork with the field goal. We'll take a break. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. There's a running play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. Welcome back everyone to Spooler Stadium and it's looking good, Carrington. Carrington Thompson on camera, bringing you guys this SAC football action here from Spooler Stadium. The Bishop Lures Knights entering today with a three and two record and the Northrop Bruins at two and three. Northrop with a two and eight record the past four seasons, the next win Boy, they're going to be celebrating like the Cleveland Browns fans were celebrating last night. Big kickoff is going to be taken by Jordan Presley right at the one-yard line. That was a line driver, and Presley is off and running. Breaks two tackles. Folks, this could be a 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, and it is. Holy cow. Jordan Presley. You can tell he was upset that last week I didn't put him on the SAC Top 10 Players of the Week, even though he was mentioned with Norman Kanapke's performance. Uh, Jordan, yeah, you're well on your way of making the list this week. Jordan Presley, 99 yards, folks. You just This foot was on the uh, goal line. It, it doesn't get any longer than what Jordan Presley just did. If you would have caught it in the end zone, that would have been a touchback. He was at the two inch yard line, guys. Wow, Jordan Pressy breaking tackles, showing you the speed, showing you why he's one of the most electric offensive threats in the Summit Athletic Conference. The PAT is up and in. Bishop Lures leads it 21 to 17. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. There's a running play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back, everyone. How about Jordan Pressey? Oh, 
Folks, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure to get on our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and our Twitter account, 260 Sports. If not, you're really missing out because I just tweeted out Jordan Presley's 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. That's a state record, folks. Look at Bishop Lures with a little bit of trickery there, but that ball was smothered by number nine, Tyler Tapp. I like the call by Kyle Lindsay with 57 seconds left to play. Does Northrop have enough to drive it? 46 yards for a touchdown. And Bishop Lures with all the momentum in the world, if they would have recovered there, that could have been big for the Knights. First and 10 ball at the 44. Seth Pearson in the backfield with Jeremiah Green as we have a spread formation. Pearson looking downfield has Davion Berry just a bit overthrown. That'll bring up second down. How about them, Knights? I'm telling you, folks, if you're going to check out an SAC game, I know everybody's saying Wayne and Snyder is the game of the week. Well, yeah, that's a good game. I mean, they're both got four and one records, but every time we come and cover Bishop Lures, there are fireworks. So much fun to watch are the Knights. So too with the Bruins. A lot of people think the Northrop Bruins are one of the most improved teams in the SAC. Handoff goes to Green. He's caught right away by number 79, Gabe Hendricks, but still a big gainer. And a gain of six yards, but you know what? The clock is still turning, folks. 37 seconds and counting for Seth Pearson and the Bruins. Spread formation. Wide receiver bubble screen to Davion Barry as he's tackled right away by number 24, Nick Berkmeyer, the junior linebacker. Berkmeyer just a steady force for the Knights here on this defense. 13 seconds and counting. Northrop has timeouts left, just not taking them. Looks like they're going to be content with the clock just running out and with four seconds remaining. Oh, no. Now Northrop takes the timeout. Uh-oh. They just lost valuable, valuable seconds there. I still have them with one timeout left. I don't see timeouts on the scoreboard. I know Bishop Lewis scoreboard has the timeouts on there, but I still have Northrop with one timeout left, but there's only three seconds, so I guess they'll just take that into halftime with them, which you can't really do. They'll get three more timeouts in the second half. All right, 21 to 17, Knights on top. Jordan Presley, have yourself a game, young man. Scored the very first touchdown of the game with a big reception. I think it was a 30-yarder. Let me go to the SummitCitySports.com 260 Sports Twitter feed. He had the 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Oh, looks like Jake Archibald on the 15-yard keeper for a touchdown. Homestead's up 29-0 over the Legends. Okay. Fourth and three, ball at the 49. Mirso with the hard count. This is going to be a Hail Mary ball, and why not go to Quaylen Pettis, who makes the catch and breaks free. Quaylen Pettis, holy moly, 49-yard touchdown reception. Oh, gosh. How about Mr. Quaylen Pettis? Folks, nobody does more with less than Quaylen Pettis. I'm sorry. Entering today, averaging 23 yards per reception. Carrington, keep up with that one right there. Quaylen Pettis and the Bruins take the lead, 23 to 21. Oh my, that is a strong young man. And he's only a junior, folks. Quaylen Pettis at 6'4", 200 pounds. He had Knights draped all over him, but it didn't even matter. That's how strong he is. And took it to the house, to the house, to give the Bruins the lead. Oh my, 49 yards with three seconds on the clock, folks. Oh no, I don't know what's going on. 
Oh, my. Quaylen Pettis. I'm about ready to tweet out another highlight, folks, so make sure that you follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. That's where I also found that 15-yard quarterback keeper for a touchdown by Jake Archbold as the Spartans are up big time. Oh, my. Worth the price of admission is this game and Quaylen Pettis. Borzik with the PAT attempt to give his team the three-point lead. And it's up. And it's in. We'll head to halftime. Northrop up 24 to 21. And the Knights should be getting the ball to start the second half. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Holy cow. Hey, we're going to have the Northrop band for you, so stick around. When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 This is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. Big Orange Pride, enjoy everybody.
The Big Orange Pride, outstanding performance. You're watching Indiana High School Football here on SummitCitySports.com. When you experience a sports injury, Reliable, buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Concussions. They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher. Pushing further, Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne Mad Ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's a... to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. Welcome back, everyone, to Spooler Stadium. Just two minutes away from the start of the third quarter. Let's take a look at some of the halftime stats. Norman Kanapke, 10 of 18 for 96 yards and one touchdown. He does have one interception. Jordan Presley with two rushes for two yards. Braden Coward, six rushes for 25 yards. Receiving-wise, Justin Gaston, four receptions, 31 yards. Jordan Presley, two receptions, 38 yards. Jay McJohnson, four receptions, 27 yards. Gabe Hendricks and Allen Jackson leading Bishop Lures with six tackles apiece. Hendricks also has a tackle for a loss for minus three yards. Jordan Presley with a 99-yard kickoff return for a touchdown and a punt return for a touchdown of 42 yards. How about Jordan Presley? He's accounted for all three touchdowns for the Bishop Lewis Knights. Jordan Presley, everybody. Looking at the Northrop offense, Bailey Mears was four for seven for 31 yards. Seth Pearson, two of six for 51 yards. He did have the 49-yard touchdown strike to Quaylen Pettis. 
Mirso, eight attempts for 61 yards, rushing and one touchdown. Jeremiah Green, 13 attempts, 88 yards, one touchdown. Jeremiah Green is averaging 6.7 yards per carry. Receiving wise, Quaylen Pettis with three receptions for 62 yards and a touchdown. Davion Berry, three catches for 20 yards. Leading the Northrop defense is Alex Centerweight with four tackles. Antoine Scott has a tackle for a loss for minus one yard. And Mason Thompson has the interception that he returned for 14 yards. So folks, this, this game is everything I thought it would be as the Bishop Lures Knights find themselves in so many shootouts. This proving not to really be any difference here. Entering today, these are the two most scoring teams in the SAC. Northrop scoring 167 points entering today. Lures at 166. Right behind them is Snyder at 160. Oh. Okay. Next week is rivalry week in the SAC as Bishop Lures will take on. So once again, it's rivalry week and Bishop Lures will take on Dwanger and it'll be a home game for Lures. And then Northrop and Snyder are going to play each other and I believe that's a home game for Northrop. Snyder, Northside, and Dwanger is left on the schedule for Northrop. Lures has Dwanger, Southside, and Snyder. Snyder got, has a tough schedule remaining. Short kickoff is taken by the up back. That's number 24 who's met right away. Nick Berkmeyer. <laughs> Berkmeyer, once again, a strong presence in the locker room for the Knights. Folks, today's broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports. Like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. At Parkview Sports Medicine, it's game on. We're the region's largest integrated sports medicine team, providing athletes specialized services for improving their performance to recovering from injuries. To learn more, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Parkview Sports Medicine and SummitCitySports.com has a great relationship. Big shout out to Tommy Shegler, who used to be the sports director at 21 Alive and now runs things at Parkview Sports Medicine. Kanapke going towards the sideline, finds Justin Gaston. So much speed makes the first two tacklers miss, and he will be tackled after a gain of about 15 yards for Justin Gaston. Justin Gaston did lead Bishop Lures in the first half in receptions. So nice for Kyle Lindsay to have that threat back on his squad. First and 10 from the 48. Knapke. That is a pass to Braden Coward who came out of the backfield. Coward now making defenders miss. Bishop Lures coming out to play here in the third quarter. There we go, now officially the third quarter. Flag thrown on the play. Nigel Robertson making the tackle downfield, showing you his speed from his defensive end position to track down the running back. That was a pass in the flats for Norman Kanapke to Braden Coward. Coward is solidifying himself as somewhat of the featured running back even though they have Jordan Presley. The Knights like to use Presley in the slot. So that brings up first and 10 ball at the 20 with 11.20 left to play. Handoff goes to Coward, who is following his offensive lineman. There just wasn't much room to run there. <laughs> Looks like that's going to bring up second and goal with the ball at about the nine-yard line.
Kanapke has trips to the right, two receivers in the slot. The pass goes to Jordan Presley. Nowhere to go. Once again, we've been talking about the closing speed of the linebacker, Antoine Scott. He certainly has it. Number 35, Antoine Scott, just a junior. Good player for Coach Jason Dorfler. Coach Dorfler once again is in his fifth season with Northrop with a 10 and 35 record. Two wins in each of his seasons. Looking to break the hump this year. Kanapke on the delayed screen there finds Braden Coward, but he's tackled by Nigel Robertson. Nigel Robertson making a name for himself here in this game as he has been all season. Entering today, one of the top sacks man in the SAC. Nigel Robertson is tied for fifth in the Summit Athletic Conference, coming in with five sacks. Carter Drake to attempt the field goal. It'll be a 27-yard attempt for Carter Drake to tie this game. The kick is up. And in, Lures ties it up at 24. You're watching Indiana High School Football here on SummitCitySports.com. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back to Spooler Stadium. My name is Jeff Mahoney, and on camera is Carrington Thompson. Carrington's mother, Leanne Thompson, just retired from the Fort Wayne Community Schools where she was an assistant principal at Snyder this past year. So we congratulate her on the retirement and want to thank her so much for her service to the Fort Wayne Community Schools. Bishop Lewis to kick off here with 9.35 left to play in the third quarter. We're tied at 24. Taking it in the end zone, that's going to be a touchback. That was... Davion Barry. He is so good. You can see Davion was upset that he didn't get to return the rock because he knows he can light up the scoreboard at any moment. Coming back out at quarterback is Seth Pearson. So Bailey Mirso after the injury in the first quarter, I don't think he's going to get back into this game, folks. We want to give... Our best to Bailey Mirso as we see him standing on the sideline right now. First and 10 ball at the 20, 9.34 on the clock. Pearson with the handoff to Jeremiah Green. It's going to be a short gain as he is met by number 24 for the Knights, Nick Berkmeyer, along with number 34, Allen Jackson. We're going to have to check out the stats after this one, the Lures official stats, to see how how many tackles Jackson racks up from his middle linebacker position in this 4-3 defense. Looking more like a 3-3, kind of a nickel package here with five DBs out on the field. Handoff goes to Jeremiah Green. He's met this time by Jackson along with number 20. How about Raymond Anderson? Raymond Anderson's had a big game. He's been a part of some big hits. To bring up third and one ball at the 29 yard line. 8.34 and counting in this shootout at Spooler Stadium. This is week number six of the SAC season. And it looks like Pearson fumbles the snap but jumps right back on it. I think he fell forward for the first down, so. Coach Dorfler will take it either way he can get it. 
Folks, Summit City Sports trivia question for the night is, who is the first ever Bruin to score a touchdown? Who is the first ever Bruin to score a touchdown? Tweet it out at 260 Sports. I don't have any prizes to give, but, you know, it'll feel good if you get it right. Handoff goes to Jeremiah Green. And good pursuit there by number 99, Henry Verslip. Just a sophomore defensive lineman for Bishop Lures. That'll be a gain of zero. Ah, they're going to give him two on the play. Folks, who scored the first ever touchdown? It happened in 1971, the first year for Northrop High School. Ernie Bodrab was on that team. Ernie Bodrab, that was the interim head coach that led Bishop Lewis to their last state championship. Pearson on the option, pitches it to Jeremiah Green. Cut back for Green, runs right into Allen Jackson after a pickup of about four yards. Jackson, he's got a nose for the ball. It's going to bring up third and four for the Bruins at the 38-yard line. Had a chance to see Kuala Jackson at halftime. She's a graduate from the University of St. Francis and was a part of the 2014 National Championship team at St. Francis. 38-0 was their record. That is not easy to do, folks. She now works for the Mad Ants, and she's the proud older sister of Quaylen Pettis. Pass to the sideline. Pettis snags it right out of the air. That is a beautiful snag by number six, and I think he might have enough for the first down is called by the referee. Folks, Quaylen Pettis makes the most of his opportunities for the Northrop Bruins. Tweet at 260 Sports and let us know who scored the first ever Northrop Bruin touchdown. I'll have your answer at the start of the fourth quarter. Pearson out of the shotgun. Handoff goes to Jeremiah Green. Green cuts it up the gut. Ooh, just like we saw last week with Holiday, the running back for Northside, Jeremiah Green trucking right up the gut for the big gainer. Nine, that's a gain of about 24 yards. Four, the junior running back, Jeremiah Green. I'll tell you what, Northrop's going to have to find a quarterback next year, but they're, they're returning some really good players. First and 10 ball, 35-yard line, 6.02 left here in the third quarter. Mirso out of the shotgun. we got a spread formation with Jeremiah Green in the backfield. Handoff goes to Green, working off the left tackle. He's met in the backfield by number 55, Will Derrick, the defensive tackle. He's only a junior. Derek, an athletic defensive lineman. You saw him skate through the O-line into the backfield. Defensive lineman, Derek. I don't know if you guys know this, but on, this, on that 1971 Northrop football team, was also an actor that played a part on Frazier. Oh, wide open, Seth Pearson. Over to number 15, Adrian Sewell. Pearson looked to his right, went to his third progression. Sewell on the left sideline. The throw took Sewell out of bounds, but he did make the catch. I'm not sure what happened there in the Bishop Lures defensive backfield, but there was some miscommunication. Brings up first and 10 from the 16. Pearson, spread formation with Green in the backfield. First and 10 from the 16, 5'10 on the game clock. Handoff goes to Jeremiah Green. Once again, cuts it back. That's a gain of about 10 yards. That's going to bring up first and goal for the Northrop Bruins. So if you're wanting to know who the TV actor is, it was Dan Butler. Dan Butler was a part of that 1971 Northrop football team that was coached by Buzz Dorfler. Buzz, the uncle to Jason Dorfler, brother of Dean and Dale. 
Handoff goes to Jeremiah Green with the right stiff arm. Touchdown from five yards out for Jeremiah Green. Northrop back on top. How about those Bruins? Old Jeremiah Green averaged 6.7 yards per carry in the first half. He's starting to add to that total, folks, here in the second half. Northrop's up by six, 30 to 24, with 434 left to play. Pearson with the hold, but Jorick with the extra point, and it's up and in. Once again, we got a shootout, 34 to 24, 31 to 24. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummerCitySports.com. There's a running play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back, everybody. Check it out. I told you, these cheerleaders, these students, are going to be swole after this game. How about Jeremiah Green? Back deep will be Jay McJohnson and Jordan Presley for the Knights. It's just a matter of time before Jay McJohnson makes something electrifying happen. Bajoric with the kickoff for Northrop. We knew this would be a shootout, and it certainly is. Northrop looking for their third win on the season. It'd be the first time ever for head coach Jason Dorfler. Squib kick taken by the up man. He will not fall on. He's trying to get extra yards. That's number four. For Bishop Lures, Johnny Sewell. Scary play there if you're Coach Kyle Lindsay. A lot of times you like to see that up back fall on the ball right there. As you know, the kickoff team is just charging after you. First and 10, ball at the 37-yard line with 4.30 left to play in the third quarter. Now, if you were at the University of St. Francis, that up man would have been Pearson Harnish. What a running quarterback he was at Norwell in his days. Trips to the right for Bishop Lures. Kanapke out of the shotgun. Coward in the backfield. Coward staying in the block. The pass goes over to Cam Hedgecock. Oh, excuse me, that's number 16, Nate Moore, with a big reception. Gain of about 20 yards on the play. That'll bring up a first down for Bishop Lures. First and 10 from the 44. Spread formation for the Knights. Kanapke out of the shotgun. 4.15 on the clock. Kanapke, quick throw, finds Nate Moore. Working off the block by Jay McJohnson is pushed out of bounds. Jay McJohnson did a great job there engaging the defensive back and giving Nate Moore an opportunity to rack up a few more yards. Moore would have had to cut that one back to the middle of the field. So on second and one from the 35, we got trips up top. Presley out of the shotgun. Presley, the handoff goes over to Braden Coward. Coward reverses against the grain. Coward has got room to run, and he's pushed out of bounds about the two-yard line. That's a 33-yard gainer for Braden Coward. Big time run there for that young man. Hurry up offense here as the handoff goes to Coward. Let's see if they can capitalize the Knights. I don't even think Coward's down as he's sitting on top of the defender. Looks like there was a, was there a flag on the play? No flag. That'll bring up second and four from the, well, second goal from the four. Folks, I don't even know if Coward was down on that one. Th 
325 left to play. Knapke, oh, needed a little bit more loft on that throw right there as he was looking for Nate Moore. You could tell right after the ball left his hand. Now, once again, folks, you have to remember that the wind is blowing from the northwest to the southeast. So Kanapke had a little bit more velocity thanks to the wind. Third down and four. 320 left to play here in the third quarter. Lures trying to keep up in this track meet. Kanapke, quick throw, touchdown. Norman Kanapke to Jay McJohnson pulls the Knights to a thin one. Knew it was a matter of time before Jay McJohnson got on the scoreboard. Number three is just another one of these great wide receivers for Coach Kyle Lindsey. Coach Kyle Lindsey, the son of Matt Lindsey, who coached 33 years at Bishop Lures High School, winning nine state championships. That's right, folks, nine state championships. It's unprecedented in the state of Indiana. Bishop Lures rattling off four straight state championships from 2009 to 2012. And how about the first ever Northeast Indiana Mr. Football in the state of Indiana, Jalen Smith. Folks, if you haven't seen, check out Summit City Sports Facebook fan page where we posted Big Jalen Smith's hit on Eli Manning. Con Carter Drake, PAT is up and in. We are tied at 31. You're watching Indiana High School Football here on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me, but to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Welcome back, everybody. 316 on the clock. We are tied at 31 here from Spooler Stadium. Kick goes deep, and this time it will be returnable for Davion Barry. Barry trying to cut it out and staying right up the gut. He will get to about the 33 yard line. Another nice return for Davion Barry. It's important to note, folks, that in the fourth quarter, Northrop will have the wind at their back. We did see in the first quarter how Norman Kanapke's throw got hung up in the air, and that was an interception for Mason Thompson of Northrop. Kanapke has as good an arm as you're going to see in the SAC. Of course, he does lead the Summit Athletic Conference in passing yardage with over 1,400. First and 10 ball at the 33-yard line. In motion is Davion Barry. The handoff on the jet sweep. Barry trying to cut it up. Lost his footing there for a second. Hey, guess who was there to make the tackle for Bishop Lures? If you said Raymond Anderson, you just won. Raymond Anderson's been all over the field. Also in on the stop was Nick Berkmeyer. I know everybody's eagerly anticipating the answer to our trivia question, which is who scored the first ever touchdown for Northrop in their inaugural season of 1971. Second and four ball at the 39 yard line, 233 and counting here at Spooler Stadium. Pearson, handoff goes to Jeremiah Green, runs right into the back of his O lineman, but still able to pick up about one yard. I'll tell you what, it is not easy for the offensive lineman to get push against Bishop Lures. When you're going up against Gabe Hendricks and Jack Sweeney, it's not easy, not even close to being easy. 
First Lips going to check out of the game. Checking back in is Jacob Krieger, the defensive end. Bishop Lures really likes what they see in the sophomore, Henry Verslip. Krieger just a junior. Both the defensive ends have a lot of length. Which is good when you want to disrupt the passing lanes of those quarterbacks. Carrington played defensive end, but he had to rely on his speed. Carrington about 6'1". Carrington's definitely not short. He's definitely not small. Spread formation here for the Northrop Bruins on second and nine from the 34. We're tied at 31. Pearson with Jeremiah Green in the backfield. Green has not taken a breather all game. He's a workhorse. That's a fumble by Pearson. Picks it back up. Throwing across his body. Incomplete. That's going to bring up third down and nine. That's the second time that we've seen Pearson fumble the rock. He hasn't really played all year because Bailey Mirso has been outstanding, but now Mirso on the sideline. He's still dressed. I don't know if he can get back into this game or not. We certainly hope he can play next week, but Pearson has filled in admirably. Spread formation on this third and nine. 155 remaining in the third quarter. How about Seth Pearson and the Bruins? Will they go back to Quaylen Pettis? Mirso looking that direction. Instead, that pass was intended for Amarion Green. Green with the short route. Looked like the five and out. Out and up. It looked like Quaylen Pettis was on the post route into the middle. Either way, that's going to result into a punt. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is not a good thing for Northrop because they are punting into this win, folks, and they have a new punter. It's Alex Saderweight, the linebacker. I really don't think you want to fake it either if you're Northrop. you got to keep this kick low. Let's see how he does. Saderweight, the linebacker. A good linebacker at that, and it's blocked. That block is punting, it's going backwards. I believe that's number 25 on the block for Bishop Lures. His name is Grant LaSure. Let's watch that one one more time, folks, so we can really see what happened. So Saderway gets a snap. You see coming off the edge, no, that was number 24 for the Knights. Nick Berkmeyer and the ball matriculated the wrong direction. That's a huge play for the Knights. That might be exactly what they need to kind of take control of this game. Spread formation, 136 left to play, first and 10 from the 34. Kanapke from the shotgun, looks to the left. Pass is complete to number 16. Nate Moore, nice move as he makes the defender miss. Moore is going to be tackled at the 10-yard line. Again, a 24. Oh, there's a flag on the play. That's going to be a holding against the Knights. So that's going to push them all the way back to the 34. We'll be first and forever here for the Knights. Looks like first and 25. Norman Kanapke, quick throw. Jay McJohnson, he's hit right away. Dislodging the ball was number 26 for the Bruins, John Urza. Carrington Thompson with the beautiful hero shot for you folks. It's going to bring up second 25 from the 50-yard line. 
Kanapke has trips up top. On the bottom of your screen is Nate Moore. That looked like number one, Justin Gaston. Led Bishop Lures in receiving in the first half. Gets up, gets back about 10 yards. It's going to bring up third and 15. Lures really needs to capitalize on this block punt. But that holding penalty was devastating. That was a swing of about 40 yards. 36 seconds left to play in the third. Tied at 31. Flag on the play. False start against Bishop Lures. Back him up five more. That'll bring up third and 20. Going back to that block punt, you know. Sometimes people like to say kickers aren't a part of a football team or they don't matter. Or I'll tell you what. You don't know what it's like when you don't have a kicker, then you realize just how valuable they are. And when you have a really good kicker, well, just the same. Third and 20, Kanapke flushed out of the pocket. Robertson has him and pushed out of bounds. Robertson, Lures is looking for the flag and they'll get it. No, that, that looked about right, folks. Robertson probably just one or two steps too much. He just. Once again, it's the quarterback position. You got to protect the quarterback. The referees know that. Robertson, it really stinks because he's just playing 110% and finishing on the play, but that tackle looked to be about one or two yards OB. Looks like the referees are going to wave this one off here. So you know what? That never happened. Fourth and 20, and Lewis is going to have to bring out the punting unit with the wind at their back. Expect this to be a 45-yarder. And it's going to be the quarterback, Kanapke, to punt it. In the center of the wall there is Gabe Hendricks. So if you want to block this thing, you better come from the outside. Oh no, Kanapke fumbles it, and it is blocked. That'll roll out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Holy cow. What doesn't this game have, folks? Take another look at it. You see Norman. And the snap was low, actually bounced off the turf. Kanapke did a good job of really salvaging that and getting a few yards out of the punt. Still, though, that's only a punt of nine yards, eight yards. First and 10 from the 37, 16 seconds left to play in the third. Seth Pearson in for the injured. Bailey Mirso. the pitch goes out to Jeremiah Green. Nice snag with the left hand. And we got a fumble. Picking it up will be the Knights. At first look, that looked like the Knights. And it is as the Knights faithfully erupt in applause. It looked like the guys were cheering for number seven with the recovery, Josh Dipple. Dipple, number seven. Yep, that was Josh Dipple, number seven, with the recovery. That's huge. Four Bishop Lures here with six seconds left to play in the third. Remember, they will have the wind in their face for the fourth quarter. We'll see if Norman Kanapke wants to air it out here to put his team in good position to start the fourth. Spread formation, Kanapke, and it's going to be a screen to Coward. Gain of about nine yards on the play. That's going to do it for the third quarter. You're watching Indiana High School football here 
on SummitCitySports.com. What a game we have here. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me. I always had my team behind me. But to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Fourth quarter, Bishop Lures with the ball. Let's take another look at this play, folks. Jeremiah Green once again had another strong run. He's averaging over seven yards per carry. But boom, a big hit. Looks like that got dislodged by number six for the Knights. Joe Derrick recovered by number seven, Josh Dipple. Six to seven. That's a nice little combination there for Bishop Lures. Twelve minutes on the clock as we start this fourth quarter. We're tied at 31. It is second and one after that screen pass to Coward. Kanapke in motion. That was Justin Green. Handoff goes to Jordan Presley. Presley breaking tackles. He'll be taken down at the 15. Looks like the 14-yard line. Outstanding run there by Presley. What a play there, drawn up by Coach Kyle Lindsay. Once again, fake on the jet sweep to Justin Gaston. It actually goes to Presley, and then Presley does the rest. Just doing what Jordan Presley does. We're out. And we lost the scoreboard for a second, but it is first and 10. Presley once again, this time Nigel Robertson from behind with the hog tackle. Nigel Robertson's had a nice game here for the Northrop Bruins, putting together an outstanding junior season. Some very good juniors for the Bruins. That'll bring up second and nine from the 14. Looks like Presley's gonna remain in the backfield. The wide receiver on the bottom of your screen is number seven, Josh Dippold, being rewarded for that fumble recovery. Kanapke going to his first progression, and that's a touchdown to Nate Moore. 14 yard score for Moore. Lures takes the lead here, 37 31 in this shootout at Spooler Stadium. Nate Moore, the score for the lead, Bishop Lures. Norman Kanapke putting on another clinic. With the extra point, Carter Drake, it's up and it's in. Bishop Lures takes the lead, 38-31. You're watching high school football here on SummitCitySports.com. Corners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game, to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Welcome back, everybody. Bishop Lure is always worth the price of admission here. Takes the lead back 38 to 31 over Northrop. 
Kelly Automotive Group is Indiana's number one automotive group with over 1,000 new vehicles and 500 pre-owned vehicles to choose from. Please visit drivekelly.com. Simple, transparent, and reliable. The world is waiting for you to make a difference in a way that only you can. Discover your strengths at Indiana Wesleyan University's residential campus in Marion, Indiana. Visit indwes.edu. Short one taken by Quaylen Pettis. Pettis looking to cut back up the gut. He's hard to bring down, but making the shoestring tackle was number four, Johnny Sewell. Big Eye Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions. Enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eye Fish. I used to work at Famous Fish Astro, and Big Eye Fish is just as good, if not better. Back to the action here. First and 10, ball at the 32-yard line. Pearson out of the shotgun, spread formation in motion. There's a Marion Green jet sweep as he collides with Pearson. That'll slow things up a bit. Enough for number 23 to make the tackle. Contrell Ash Jr. for the Knights. The University of St. Francis offers 100% job employment in select programs and 100% pass rates on many licensure exams. With over 2,300 students, the main campus is located in the heart of Fort Wayne. Visit sf.edu. Second and nine, ball at the 33-yard line for Pearson. Pearson wide open. That ball was blocked at the line of scrimmage. It was number eight for Bishop, number 88, Jacob Krieger, I believe, for Bishop Lures. Let's take another look at it here. There you can see Krieger. Looks like the Lures Knights guys are trying to fly away. No, that was the big man. That was the big man getting his paw on it. Gabe Hendricks. Third and nine from the 33. Pearson going down the near sideline, intended for Davion Berry, incomplete. And I believe we have a penalty flag on the far sideline, right by where Coach Lindsay is standing. Coach Lindsay is telling the defense to decline which would bring up a fourth and nine punting situation for the Bruins. Good crowd here at Spooler Stadium for Northrop. It is their homecoming. Back to punt it will be Alex Saderway for Northrop. Back to return, it's Justin Gaston along with Jordan Presley. Okay, folks, I'm going to have the answer for our trivia question, so I hope you guys tweeted it out. The kick is up. Presley is going to field it at the 28-yard line. Met right away by a host of Bruins. Making the initial hit was number 81, the defensive end, James Jones, the senior at 6'2", 185. All right, folks, and the answer to tonight's trivia question is Randy Wolf. That's right, Randy Wolf scored the very first touchdown for the Northrop Bruins in the 1971 season. He was actually a fullback for that team. The running back was Larry Hamilton. And I believe Hamilton's brother used to be the chief of police in Fort Wayne, so... Hopefully Randy's, Randy can hear this. Anybody who's played for Randy Wolf loves Wolfie. Norman Kanapke, quick throw to Justin Gaston, working off the screen by Presley as he keeps on grounding out yardage all the way to about the 41. That'll be a gain of nine yards. Randy Wolf, now a defensive line coach at the University of St. Francis. He's probably at a hotel room in Chicago, Illinois, as the Cougars will take on St. Xavier tomorrow, 2 p.m. kickoff. Second and two. 
ball at the 44. Knapke, he's got trips left. Handoff to Coward. It is a fumble, but Braden's going to pop right on it. Heads up play there by great Braden Coward as, you know, it's, a, it's a actually a little chilly tonight with the wind gusting in, and I don't know if that's really affecting things. I guess it shouldn't. But we've seen a few fumbles in this game. Brings up third, and it looks to be about four yards. Nope, third and five from the 38. Kanapke looks to the left, goes to his first progression, and that's Jordan Presley. Oh, and I believe we're going to have a penalty. Let's see if maybe that was a late hit. They're going to give the catch to Presley. The flag. No, it's going to be holding against the Knights. Yeah, you can see that there on the top of your screen one more time. Oh, looks like Nigel Robertson just flat out got tackled. That's understandable because Robertson has that great combination of speed and power coming off the defensive edge. Third and five, ball at the, no, it's third and a lot more than that. It's more like third and 22 from the 20. Nickel defense for the Bruins. No, actually, they got Nigel Robertson out covering Jordan Presley in the slot. Is that a mismatch? Single safety high. Oh. And I think Lures is going to take a timeout here. We'll take one with them. You're watching Indiana High School Football on SummitCitySports.com, everybody. Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Both runners are running. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration. We are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports, become a sponsor, join our winning team today. Welcome back to Spooler Stadium where it's third and 22 from the 28-20 left to play here in the fourth quarter. Empty backfield in the slot is Jay McJohnson. Kanapke out of the shotgun. Pass goes to Johnson. He is hit right away by Nigel Robertson along with number 24 walking off the field. Vaughn Cruz. How about that, Nigel Robertson? Before the timeout, he was actually guarding Jordan Presley in the slot with safety help. Davion Barry, along with Quaylen Pettis, back deep for Northrop. Norman Kanapke with the punt. Not a bad punt, but once again got hung up in the air. It bounces at the 49, and we'll get a Knights roll all the way to the Northrop 48. So once again, Kanapke got it off cleanly, but the higher you kick that ball in the air, the less you're going to get kicking in this direction. Northrop with the advantage here in the fourth quarter, wind at their back, but yet they do trail it 38 to 31. Bishop lures Nate Moore with the score to start this fourth quarter and give the Knights a 38 31 lead. Spread formation, Jeremiah Green in the backfield. Pearson's pass finds Davion Barry. Beautiful open field tackle by Raymond Anderson, but still. 
That's a gain of about 15 yards for a North Dub Bruins. First down, Davion Barry. Barry, a senior at 5'10", 170. Him and Amarion Green to start the season were the only two players for Northrop going both ways. And that's a huge move in the right direction for this program. Only having two players going both ways. Handoff goes to Green. He's going to pick up big yards on the first and ten. Looks like a gain of about six yards, close to seven. So he's right around his average for this game and for the season. That'll bring up second and four, ball at the 31. Pearson, shotgun for me, shotgun. Pearson going downfield. He has Sewell, and it's broken up once again. Raymond Anderson. Ramon Anderson from his safety position is all over the place. That'll bring up third and four from the 31. Spread formation, shotgun for Pearson with green. Single safety, that's Anderson because he can cover so much ground. Pearson, the handoff goes to Jeremiah Green, and he's stuck for a loss. Number 34 all night long, Alan Jackson. Heck, that might even be a country music song. Jackson getting her done, number 34. Brings up fourth and four. This would be a huge defensive stop for Bishop Lures with 6.06 left to play and counting. Lures has the O linemen and the running backs to eat up more of this clock if they can get the stop. Spread formation for Pearson. Green in the backfield. Pearson and finds Quaylen Pettis and that one through the hands of the wide receiver. That one hit his belly. Pettis is not going to be too happy about that drop as he would have picked up the first down. What a huge defensive stop as that's a turnover on downs by Northrop. A lot of people have talked about this Knights defense saying they didn't have what it takes in the SAC, but when it mattered, stepping up large right there for Bishop Lures. Be first and 10, ball at the 30. Ramon Anderson and Allen Jackson, two of the MB MVPs here for the Knights defense. Here we have trips left with Norman Kanapke, and we might have had some movement. Looks like that's going to be a timeout for Coach Kyle Lindsey and the Bishop Lures Knights. We'll take one with him. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly. Welcome back, everyone. First and 10 ball at the 30 yard line for Kanapke and the Knights. Big conversion here, and Kanapke goes to Jordan Presley. Nice move, but he is stuck right at the 49-yard line. Nice short tackle there for by number 35, Antoine Scott, and number 24, Vaughn Cruz. Excuse me, that was first down. That brings up second one. Wow, 21-7. to Wayne on top of Snyder. 
in what many believe was the game of the week. Justin Gaston, sideline at the catch at the sideline, and that might have been a fumble as he was held up there. Refs never blew the whistle for forward progress, but that will be a catch for Justin Gaston. Brings up a first and 10 now from the 44, 46. For these Bishop Lures Knights. Five minutes now left in the fourth quarter. Trips left, the lone receiver on the bottom of your screen is Justin Gaston. Handoff goes to Coward. Coward still running. He needs to stay in bounds and does. He's tackled from behind by Nigel Robertson. Big gain on the play of about 14 yards. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 32 yard line. And if you're Kyle Lindsay, there's nothing wrong with just handing it to Braden Coward. Behind this big O line as the clock keeps ticking at 430. Coach Jason Dorfler and his defense, they need a strip sack. Oh, and it is a fumble! And James Jones on top of it. I believe that was caused by Nigel Robertson. Oh, buddy, that's what Northrop needed. Let's take a look at this replay, everybody. Handoff goes to Braden Coward. On the top of your screen is Nigel Robertson. He got his left paw in there, and the other defensive end, James Jones, recovers it for Northrop. Big time play. DN connection right there. Nigel Robertson and James Jones. Got a player down on the field. Nigel Robertson forces the fumble. I'm getting ready to tweet this one out, folks. So make sure you follow at 260 Sports so you can see all these great highlights. So it will be the backup quarterback, Seth Pearson, who's had a really good game from that res reserve role. Spread formation with Jeremiah Green in the backfield. The pitch goes to Green. Green looking for contact there, gets it from Allen Jackson, but still a gain of about seven yards. Green doing a good job of securing that ball for the Bruins. Remember, Northrop does have the wind at their back, and it is windy. Brings up second and two from the 38. Bottom of your screen is Davion Berry along with Sewell. Handoff goes to Jeremiah Green. Green is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of one will bring up third and one. Making the tack, oh, Allen Jackson once again. I wouldn't be surprised, folks, if he has 15 tackles in this game. Third and one, ball at the 39, 327 and counting. Green on the quick snap. Good call there by Coach Dorfler. Caught me napping, that's for sure. Jackson once again making the tackle. That's a Bishop Lures middle linebacker for you. Brings up first and 10 from the 45. Bishop Lure is always known for their middle backers as that ball intended for number 15, Adrian Sewell, incomplete. One name that comes to mind is Brent Wasilic, 
a great middle linebacker for the Knights back in the 70s, I believe it was. Flag on the play. And that's going to push Northrop back, way back. But, hey, it'll still be first down, but first in a long ways. You're looking about first and 25. Spread formation, ball at the 28-yard line. Pearson from shotgun, looking for Jeremiah Green on the screen. Ball is loose, and they're going to say incomplete. Ooh, bone chilling hit there by the Knights. Anybody want to watch that one again? I do. Pearson finds Jeremiah Green. And coming up with the big hit, I believe that was number 24 for the Knights. Nick Berkmeyer. Back to the action. Second and 26. Pearson. And across the middle, the pass was intended for Davion Barry, just a little bit too far out in front. That's going to bring up third and 26. A game like today. <laughs> How about the Bishop Lures defense stepping up when it really, really, really matters? Third and 26 with all the fireworks we've had. This game's giving you everything. Pearson spread formation. Pearson rolling out to his right. And he's being tracked down by Presley, but evades it. Trying to pick up big yards. Oh, they're going to call a horse collar? I don't know. Pearson, a nice run. The Northrop press box just exploded with horse collar. But let's take another look, folks. Pearson, once again, flushed out of the pocket by Jordan Presley, a blitzing outside backer. Allen Jackson tracking him down. Looks like Jackson just grabbed him by the sleeve. Remember, a horse collar is grabbing him by the back of the shoulder pads. Fourth and 12, 226. This is the game, everybody. Pearson. And wide open downfield is Amarion Green for the first down. Northrop Bruins. Oh, buddy. And that's going to stop the clock here on the first down. We got 215 left to play as the chain gang sets up. Waiting for the whistle. And Pearson with the handoff to Jeremiah Green. Green, once again, caught with the left arm of Nick Berkmeyer. Berkmeyer is on one right now defensively for Bishop Lures. It's going to bring up second and 10, ball to 29. What a huge play. The quarterback, Pearson, as that pass is going to be in the dirt. Seth Pearson, 5'11", 160. I don't know if he woke up today thinking, man, I'm going to be in a shootout with Bishop Lures. But here he is with 137 on the clock. He has a chance to play the role of hero. Third and 10. Ball's at the 29-yard line. Spread formation, and that's Quaylen Pettis. For Quaylen Pettis, that's the second straight ball that he has dropped right in his hands. Oh, he had the electrifying 49-yard reception for a touchdown as time expired in the first half. But the first drop he had in the second half was for a first down on fourth down. So it led to a turnover on downs for Northrop. That one right there was a pretty big one as well. It was a beautifully designed play by Coach Jason Dorfler, but now brings up fourth and 10 from the 29. Spread formation. Pearson. Looking to his left, he's going deep, and he's got a man! That's a touchdown for Davion Perry! 29-yard score! 
Holy cow. Seth Pearson, son, you are having yourself a night. Boy, he's going to wake up feeling good tomorrow. Davion Barry, big time play there for that young man. Davion, a senior at 5'10". Bajoric with the PAT to tie this thing up. Knights. Oh, that goes wide right. Holy cow. Oh, my. Oh, my. You're watching Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Oh, my. We're running. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, the University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. 38 to 37. Knights on top. And we got an onside kick coming up, everybody. This will be a fun one. Got to get the hands team out there for the Bishop Lures Knights. <laughs> Folks, if you're a business owner out there or know of a business owner, we need your support at SummitCitySports.com. Contact Jeff Mahoney at jmahoney at SummitCitySports.com to inquire about sponsorship opportunities. Bajoric with the onside kick. And that is not gonna make it, oh, almost. Nope, jumping on it will be Josh Dippel. That might do it with 123. I have Northrop with three timeouts remaining. So technically, they can get the ball back. Bishop Lures. Do you put Braden Coward in there at running back, or do you give it to Jordan Presley, who's all world? Oh my, there's no doubt about it though. Jason Dorfler doing fantastic things here for Northrop and Bruin Country here in his fifth season as the head coach. Once again, still looking for that elusive third win in a season. Kanapke has Presley right next to him. The handoff goes to Presley. He bounces it out left. Now cuts it up, field. So good is Jordan Presley. And with the tackle there, I think that was number 28 for the Bruins. 28, Mudrack. Timeout called by the Bruins. Two remaining for Northrop. How about Wayne on top of Snyder? Wayne's got to feel pretty good about themselves if they can hold on for that victory. Craig Young leading the SAC in touchdown receptions. Games are finishing up around the SAC. So it'll be second five for Bishop Lures. They have the extra protectors in. In motion is Gaston. They're not gonna go with the jet sweep. They go to Jordan Presley and he's gone. Jordan Presley, 44 yard touchdown run. 
to ice this game for the Knights. How about Jordan Presley? Bishop Lures looks like they will kick the PAT. Looking for point number 45 on the night. Carter Drake, it's up. And it's in Jordan Presley doing what Jordan Presley does, being fantastic. You're watching Indiana High School Football here on SummitCitySports.com. Play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business. It's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today. Well, just as I kind of anticipated with this matchup, it's been everything that you could possibly want. Big hits, some big defensive plays, big throws, big runs. Jordan Presley. Jordan Presley has a touchdown reception, a rushing touchdown, a kickoff return for a touchdown, and a punt return for a touchdown. Am I remembering that correctly, folks? Holy cow, Jordan Presley. Oh, yeah. And the kickoff return for a touchdown went for 99 yards. What a night for Jordan Presley. Let's check out the total yardage for Jordan Presley after this one. Oh, that kick is going to stay in bounds, picked up by Quaylen Pettis. You know, Pettis wants the end zone, but will not get there as he's brought down at the 43-yard line. Quaylen Pettis looking to take a leadership role this year on the basketball court, playing for his head coach, Rod Chamble. I'll tell you what, he's got his body into shape. Keep an eye out on that young man when basketball season comes around. But hold on. We're not finished yet. After tonight, we're still going to have three nights of SAC play. And then sectional time. 6A sectional should be very interesting with Homestead, Carroll, Snyder, and Northrop. 57 seconds left to play. Pearson, pass intended for Pettis. Incomplete. Pearson now, spread formation. Has Jeremiah Green in the backfield. We've seen this all game long. Pass going out wide intended for Marion Green is incomplete. It's going to bring up third down. And 10 for these Bruins. Currently down by 18 points. Excuse me, <laughs> where's my math? Rolling out, Pearson. Pass is caught! And is he inbounds or out of bounds? That's Davion Berry. Eight point lead here for Lures. Davion Barry with the huge, huge catch. Oh my. Brings up first and goal from the seven. Clock is running at 29 seconds. Jeremiah Green, seven yard score, and he's in. 
for the touchdown, Jeremiah Green. Northrop pulls to within two. Holy, holy cow. Will Northrop tie this game up and send it into overtime? Forty-five to forty-three Knights. Two-point conversion, and Northrop's got them spread out here. And we got a timeout going to be called by Coach Jason Dorfler. We're going to take one as well. Indiana High School football here on SummitCitySports.com. Parkview Sports Medicine is an integrated sports medicine team. I mean, I always had my family behind me, I always had my team behind me, but to have staff that wanted the best for me and to get me feeling better the quickest was really reassuring. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. All right, the North of fans are getting up for their Bruins here. Two-point conversion attempt with the team down 45 to 43. Pearson looking in the end zone, right through the hands of number seven, Davion Berry. What a game here by Northrop, but that will do it, folks. What a game by both teams, actually, I should say. Northrop, with 23 seconds, needs to get this onside kick. We'll see if they learn anything from the first onside kick, which went about eight yards before it was recovered by number seven, Josh Dippold of Bishop Lures. In this situation, the kicker is looking to get that big hop on the second bounce here so his team can sprint down there 10 yards and corral it. That unfortunately did not happen for the kicker for Northrop. Bajoric, will it happen the second time around? Bajoric, I don't know if you guys ever seen that fake onside kick attempt by that Texas high school where they left one of the wide receivers all the way al alone at the bottom of the screen. And instead of the kick going in the middle of the field, it went all the way out wide to the guy on the bottom of the screen. Uh, in Texas, man, that was a cool play. Bajoric, onside kick. And it will go 10 yards, and Northup will not recover. It's recovered by Jay McJohnson. Still, though, exciting play. Oh, you did? Oh. What does it say with that? So the Bishop Lures Knights gonna go in victory formation and take the victory. So Kyle Lindsay and his team will improve their record to four and two on the season while Bishop Lure, while Northrop and Coach Jason Dorfler will fall to two and four on the season. This was a great game by both teams. And boy, next week it's rivalry week. 
Can Northrop once again continue to build on this momentum and get a big win over Snyder High School, who they actually share this facility with? Can the Bishop Lures Knights continue this offensive just explosion and get ahead of Bishop Dwanger, who's been known to be one-dimensional this year as they are having issues throwing the ball but can run it on anybody behind Big Joe Tittman, the Division I commit to Wisconsin. There's some good games going on next week, folks, not to mention Homestead and Carroll. Carroll traveling to take on Sparty. That's a big-time matchup between those 6A schools. Wayne and Concordia. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, Wayne and Concordia. We got some good games next week. South side and north side, the battle for the totem pole. And I believe that's going to – nope, Northrop's going to take a timeout. No, that was Northrop's timeout. Well, I don't know what they're going to do, though. Forty-five, forty-three. Another good game. Carrington approves. So do I. We've had fun, folks in the Fort Wayne area and the surrounding area. Not this Saturday, but next Saturday, you're going to want to come to Bishop Darcy Stadium on September the 29th. 6 p.m. kickoff with the number one ranked team in the country, the University of St. Francis Cougars, take on the Marion University Knights. It's going to be a packed house. It will be electric at Bishop Darcy Stadium. So once again, that's going to do it here from Spooler Stadium. On behalf of Carrington Thompson, the filmer, my name is Jeff Mahoney. Bishop Lures wins it in another shootout. 45 to 43 over these Northrop Bruins. Folks, thanks so much for joining us, and you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the weekend. You are watching Indiana High School Football here on SummitCitySports.com. When you experience a sports injury, muscle, or joint pain, you want treatment right away. Parkview Ortho Express provides same-day orthopedic and sports injury care without referral or appointment, offering diagnostics, x-rays, the region's only body composition DEXA scan right inside of the Sport 1 Parkview Fieldhouse. Walk in Monday through Thursday, 7 to 7, Friday, 7 to 5, and Saturday, 8 to noon. For more information, go to parkviewsportsmedicine.com slash ortho express. It's the comments. Comments from the from the sky. 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 But this is the first time I've been able to do this kind of more uh, complete understanding or view of your body. One of the things that's really important about this is that it's kind of legitimizing us as athletes. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Choose from over 60 vehicles under $10,000. Visit drivekelly.com. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple. Transparent. Reliable. Concussions. They're a concern for parents of athletes in any sport. That's why Parkview Sports Medicine is leading the way with the area's first concussion clinic. Our integrated sports medicine team utilizes an innovative, evidence-based approach 
to manage athletic-related head injuries in those 14 and older, providing comprehensive care to get the athlete you love safely back in play. To schedule an appointment, call Parkview Sports Medicine at 266-4007. Reaching higher, pushing further. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... Go to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne mad ants in action. Get mad about blue. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting me up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education but also the experience. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Both runners are running, play coming home. From the crucial plays to the highlight of the game to the victory celebration, we are there. Summit City Sports isn't just a business, it's a group of companies investing in the youth of Fort Wayne Athletics. It's because of Parkview Sports Medicine, because of Kelly Automotive Group, Indiana Wesleyan University, University of St. Francis, and Big Eye Fish, that we can produce our broadcast viewed by hundreds of thousands in Northeast Indiana. Support Summit City Sports. Become a sponsor. Join our winning team today.